Juice hits a snag. We'll try to wiggle out of it. And a stern concern. All this and more to come. This is Tomorrow Space News. The Artemis 1 mission that launched last November has completed most of its missions, and the Orion capsule returned successfully and showed that Artemis 2 should be safe enough for crew. A side mission using a CubeSat launched and released on the way to Luna has been working hard collecting data and is close to its end. The 6U size spacecraft Luna HMAP has suffered a propulsion failure due to a stuck valve, so may only complete some of its mission goals. All other parts of the spacecraft appear to be working. This failure is speculated by the principal investigator Craig Hargrove to have been caused at least in part by the long launch delay, where the team could not access the six-liter spacecraft once installed, and their iodine propellant system was only supposed to tolerate four or five months of launch delays due to shelf life issues. While the team is sad, they are acting in the best interests of the overall mission in pulling the plug. We look forward to hearing more from this team with results and perhaps a next mission. The JUICE spacecraft on its way to Jupiter to look at the icy moons has suffered an anomaly, being unable to unfurl the radar antenna, apparently due to an interference with a retaining pin. The team are going to attempt a maneuver to shake it up and warm some parts by pointing towards Sol to see if that makes anything better. If this works, and if it doesn't, either way we'll tell you about it. So clicky clicky to hear about it then. Mm. We hope their try goes as well as mine just did. There is a kerfuffle, a conflict even in the kind professional sense that scientists hold to, about the funding of New Horizons. But first, thank you to the citizens of tomorrow for your monthly contributions towards the show. Every penny is put toward the operations of Station 204, and in return, the ground support, suborbital, orbital, escape velocity, and Plaid Pro Plus citizens get access to perks like our member-only post-show hangouts and the Escape Velocity Discord channel. If that's something you fancy, take a stroll to the join button below. There is a kerfuffle around New Horizons now that the spacecraft has finished its flyby missions with great success. This is going to take a little background as the mission is 17 years in. So give me a minute or few and I'll set the scene, then unfold the drama. New Horizons was first funded in 2001 with a planned launch in 2006. It launched eight days late, and the performance of the Atlas launch vehicle was able to allow such a wide launch window, and all was nominal. This launch broke a record, reaching a maximum speed of 58,500 kilometers per hour, the fastest man-made object in history until the Parker solar probe swung by Seoul, at least enough faster to lose its license in any Earth-bound jurisdiction. Thirteen months later, the spacecraft used a gravity assist maneuver past Jupiter, then spent most of the next seven years in hibernation mode to save power. Wait, what? Power on a nuclear battery? Does that matter? Well, and to save wear and tear on the electronics. Okay, that makes much more sense to me, but what do I know? In July of 2015, the spacecraft passed closest to Pluto, and then we all finally learned what she looks like, wearing a big heart on her sleeve. Around New Year's 2019, New Horizons observes Ultima Thule, a barbell Kuiper belt object that is the farthest out body we have observed relatively closely. Now the spacecraft is cruising through the Kuiper belt with the best cameras we could fit in 2005, and our farthest astronomical instrument we have, and could have for at least two decades after we want another one, for mostly how long it takes to get out there. Now for the drama. A second extended mission was got a good grade by the senior review, but then NASA only approved funding for two years, not the requested three, and is downgrading the project to the heliophysics division where the ground staff will receive significantly less funding during those two years. Alan Stern, the principal New Horizons investigator, 
had a stern reply. I suppose everything he says is stern, but, but this one more so. I don't have direct quotes that are good out of context. When he said he was puzzled by the NASA administration's response to managing the priorities of the decadal survey, that's about as fighting words as anyone says in these parts around here. For further speculation and rampant opinion tossing, tune in tomorrow for our live show, where I will grill Jared on what really matters about all this and how they might resolve this uh, stern concern. Thank you from me and the team for letting us share our interest in space.